Okay, thank you for coming. Uh, this talk has been organized by the Santander Chair in Efficiency and Productivity. Professor Talvi is a full professor at the University of Lille 1 in France. He received the Master and PhD degrees in Computer Science in, in this country. His current research interests are in the field of multi objective optimization, parallel algorithms, metabolistic combinatorial optimization, cluster and virtual computing, hybrid and cooperative optimization, um, many, many <laughs> applications <laughs> and other things. <laughs> Professor Talvi has more than 150 publications in journals, chapters in books, uh, books, conferences, and, and, and currently he's the head of the INRIA Dolphin Project in <coughs> Lee. Thank you for coming. So thanks uh, Juan and uh, Jose Juan for the invitation. I'm always happy to be uh, here in Elche, in Spain. So in my talk I will uh, give you uh, taxonomy or what we can uh, design combining uh, what we call metaheuristics, which are efficient optimization algorithms, with algorithms from the field of more traditional mathematical programming and also machine learning. Okay, so this is the idea of this talk: how we can combine three different uh, algorithms from three different communities: uh, artificial intelligence or metaheuristic community, mathematical programming from operation research, and machine learning or data mining uh, community. Uh, artificial intelligence or metaheuristic community, mathematical programming from operation research, and machine learning or data mining uh, community. Of course, to solve optimization, and why not machine learning? Because for me, most machine learning problems can be formulated as optimization problems. So, this is the outline of my presentation. First, I will motivate why this work, okay? Then, I will propose the taxonomy. So if we have to propose a taxonomy, so I have to present what are the criteria I'm using to, to use in this taxonomy. And then, according to this taxonomy, which are present the design aspect and the implementation aspect, which are two different things, then I will uh, show you what we can do combining metaheuristics with metaheuristics, because there are a lot of different families of metaheuristics, so the, those are more traditional uh, combination. Then for the different classes of uh, hybrid techniques, I can show you some nice or success stories in combining metaheuristics with mathematical programming. This is what we call today math, math heuristics. And of course, some ideas or some one known uh, combination of metaheuristics and machine learning or data mining algorithms. And then I will give you some perspectives and conclusion of this of this work. Okay, so what are the motivation? In the recent years, a lot of papers, a lot of interest has been devoted to combining ideas from metaheuristics, mathematical programming, and machine learning. So don't forget, uh, the objective is always in, in designing uh, optimization algorithms or machine learning algorithms. The criteria are always this you know, equilibrium between to explore the search space and to exploit the, the, the characteristic of the solution, of the good solution you, you are visiting. So this is always the, the equilibrium between what we call exploration of the search space and exploitation of the best uh, solution found. And one, of course, motivation is that if give me any problem, in optimization community or machine learning, you will find that the best algorithms are always, always hybrid algorithms. At least combining metaheuristics with metaheuristics or combining metaheuristics with mathematical programming. So, and in the future, it will be much more. I'm sure that in the future, all best known algorithms will combine ideas from those different cultures, for sure. So this is why, for me, it's <coughs> important to, to talk about this. And of course, this is the motivation of the, the taxonomy. Why taxonomy? To, to see uh, what are the variety of different approaches that we can design. And then, of course, to, to, to specify or to determine some terminology and classification and unifying view. To have unifying view of 
all those different works because there are a lot of lot of different hybridization. Okay, and then you can also compare the different algorithms in qualitative way and quantitative way, and you can also <coughs> identify some ideas for the future. So you will see that from this taxonomy, there are a lot of ideas that can be drawn for the future. And the, the areas that uh, few works are in. Good. So, in some, uh, just to, to give you in this slide the main, if you want, the main uh, optimization algorithms in metaheuristics. Okay? So, from my point of view, uh, I will classify, classify metaheuristics in two different meta uh, classes. Uh, single solution based. In single solution based, the algorithm will improve a single solution. Okay? I don't know if you are familiar with simulated aligning or local search or taboo search. So those algorithms are improving always a single solution. And population based, which are improving population of solutions like evolutionary algorithms, uh, artificial or particle swarm optimization or scatter search, etc. Okay, so there are some algorithms that are improving population of solution and some algorithms that are combining or improving single uh, solution. And as you know, why we are using metaheuristics? Because most of the problems we are solving are NP-complete, are hard. So this is why we cannot use exact methods. Of course, of course, we cannot guarantee the optimality, the global optimality, but we don't have the choice. We have to use approximation algorithms because the complexity of problems, we cannot solve them in exact way. Of course? Good. So, this is the idea of single solution based algorithms. You have a single solution, then you generate set of neighborhood and you replace solution giving some criteria. Those criteria and those selection mechanisms will differ from one algorithm to other algorithms. But the idea is this one, just generate single solution, generate a neighborhood and replace. Okay? And the, uh, Population-based algorithms will generate a new population and then replace the current population. Of course, the different algorithms and colonies, particle swarm, EDAs will differ from... The difference is how to reproduce the new population and how to replace the current population. But the, the general framework of the algorithms is this one. Good. So, just to give you an idea about metaheuristics. So, this is for me the most important. What are the, the most <coughs> important question, what are the main component, ingredients, if you want, in metaheuristics? So, forget, forget all the names of algorithms, because there are a lot of, you know, different uh, uh, inspired algorithms. What are the main ingredients of metaheuristics that I will talk about in this talk? So, I will not talk about algorithms, I will talk about the component. Representation. This is very important. What is your representation? The objective function. How you recombine operators, for instance, the crossover in evolution algorithms. The neighborhood. This is very important. In local search algorithms, in single solution algorithms, the neighborhood for me is the most important thing. Representation plus neighborhood are the most important thing. Then how you generate the initial solution or the initial population. And, of course, all those algorithms ha have parameters. How you tune those parameters. How you will <coughs> find the best values of those parameters. So, for me, if you are designing metaheuristics, those are the most important search component or algorithmic component that you have to, to deal with. The rest, I will not say not, not important, but not as important as this. Okay? Okay, so uh, let's now switch to mathematical programming. What's about mathematical programming? So in just one slide, I give you the main ideas in mathematical programming. So in mathematical programming, algorithms, of course, those are enumerative algorithms. It means that you will guarantee the optimality of the, the solution. So you will use those main ideas of tree search. This is tree search, okay? Like in branch and bound, dynamic programming, constant programming, A star, all those algorithms will do 
more or less some tree search. Okay? They will explore the space, they will divide the problem in sub-problems, and then they will explore and those sub-problems. They are generating three of sub-problems. Okay? So those arguments are very familiar in mathematical programming. Dynamic programming, branch and bound, branch and cut, branch and price are very familiar. And what are the main, main ingredients in those arguments? The branching. Which node of the tree you, you, you will start to explore? Branching, what we call branching. Node selection, branch ordering, variable selection. Bounding, how you prune the tree. It means that how you, you cut. You will say, this part of the tree, I will not explore it. I'm sure that the optimal solution is not there. And then propagation, how you propagate. In co for instance, in constant programming, you are doing some propagation by using filtering and deduction. But the main idea is in those arguments is branching and bounding. How you divide the problems in sub-problems, okay, and how you, you, you prune your tree. This, those are the main ideas. And then other uh, uh, efficient ideas, relaxation, you can relax the problem to be more easy to solve. The one known relaxation is the, the continuous relaxation. If you have discrete a uh, linear program, which is an uh, integral linear program, you can relax it and say, let's, let's the variable be continuous, and they will solve it easily with continuous linear programming. This is the LP relaxation, but you have more complex relaxations, like Lagrangian relaxation, etc. So the idea is of relax the problem to be more easy to solve. And in the last decade, some efficient idea in cutting branch and cut and branch and price so those ideas uh, in mathematical programming just to make the problem more easy to solve. For instance, in cutting, in branch and cut, they will select, they will add some constraints in the, uh, the, the model to make the problem more easy to solve. This is what they call cut. They, they will cut the search space. And pricing, they will select some columns, it means some variables. In your uh, linear program or linear model, they will select some colors because here we are solving huge problems. It can be millions of variables. So those people would say, we will not solve the complete problem. We will select some columns and we will fix some variables and then solve the sub-problem. So those ideas now are very efficient in mathematical programming to solve large-scale problems. OK? Good. In Spanish, you say, claro. <laughs> claro, claro. <laughs> so, now data mining. What are the main ideas in data mining that we can reuse in, in this framework? To my knowledge, to my uh, data mining problems, the main uh, task in data mining are classification or supervised, uh, cl uh, cl uh, supervised clustering. Clustering or unsupervised clustering. You, you will partition the data. You will predict the class from different variables. Feature selection. You will select what are the, the most important variables in your uh, input. And then association rules, where you will uh, find the correlation between variables. OK? So those are the main tasks in data mining. Classification, clustering, feature selection, and association rules. And as you know, of course, for each task, huge number of different arguments have been designed from artificial intelligence, from statistics, from machine learning, from etc. etc. For instance, in classification, the most well-known arguments are neural networks or clustering k-means or hierarchical algorithms or in feature selection filter methods. So a lot of I will not this is my, this is not a problem for me today. The most important thing is, is that remember those tasks. Whether, whether you, you are using neural networks or different algorithms, it's not the issue. Okay? But of course here, there are a lot of algorithms from different community to solve those problems. Okay, now, what we can do with those different frameworks? What we can do with those frameworks, machine learning, mathematical programming, and metaheuristics, to combine those ideas and solve more efficient the problems. Okay, so this is the, the objective of my talk. Any question? Because now we can we will switch to to the taxonomy. Any question about <coughs> those? It's okay. Okay, so I don't think that I will have time to talk about the implementation aspect, but it's important to separate 
the design aspect, algorithmic aspect, and the implementation aspect. Because many people are doing some confusion. So I will focus more on design aspect. If I have some time, I will talk a little bit about this. So this slide is just to present my criteria to propose the taxonomy. I, I'm using just two criteria. And then, if I'm using those two criteria, I will have four classes. Four classes of hybridization, of combination. <coughs> so what are the criteria? The first criteria is the level of combination. Is it low level? I will explain, of course. Low level or high level? So low level, what I mean by low level? It means that I will do, I will Im do, uh, I will take component from given uh, algorithms and embed it in another method. It means that I will change the internal structure of the algorithm. But in high level, I will not change the internal structure of the algorithms. I will just collaborate between them. Okay? So, I will give you some examples for each class and then you will see the difference. So, low level, what I mean, what I mean by low level is integrative. It means that you will change the internal organization specification of the algorithm. High level, it's collaborative. You will not change the internal. It's like you have black boxes and collaborate between those black boxes. In the low level, you will change the inside of the algorithms. OK? And then uh, the mode of collaboration. You will do it in relay way, like pipeline fashion or sequential way, or you will do it in teamwork, in parallel. It's completely different. So here you will use IEDs from cooperating agent, which are doing this collaboration in parallel. And here you will do this in sequential way. So it's completely different. So if we are using those two criteria, we will have four classes. Look, low level relay, low level teamwork, high level relay, and high level teamwork. So what I will do now is I will take so the outline is, I will take each class and I give you some good combinations for each class. Combining metaheuristics with metaheuristics, combining metaheuristics with mathematical programming, and combining metaheuristics with, with data mining. Of course, I will not be exhaustive. There is one paper where you have more examples, but I will just pick for me the most important ideas. Good. So. This class, there are very, very few algorithms in this class. So in this taxonomy, we will see that in this class, there are very few algorithms. I will sh show you one, which is very efficient algorithms, very simple ideas. And believe me, the, the most efficient ideas are the most simplest, OK? Uh, very efficient ID proposed in uh, 15 or 20 years ago, but it's very efficient to solve uh, some problems. What's the idea here? So it's low level relay. So th uh, this guy, for instance, here is combinating, uh, doing. So here I will give you an example uh, combination between metaheuristics and metaheuristics. Is embedding some local search in simulated learning. Just this ID. So the ID is that are you familiar with simulated learning and local search? So in simulated learning, simulated learning is local search algorithms, okay? But the idea here is to use two different neighborhoods and in simulated learning, just explore the local optima, just the local optima. So simulated learning will manipulate only local optima and each time simulated learning is generating solution, we apply local search to obtain local optima. So this simple idea, but of course to, to implement this idea, you have to use two different neighborhoods. In simulated learning, you will use large neighborhood and the local search you will use small neighborhood. So very simple ID. And they apply this ID to academic problems like the, uh, traveling salesman problem, etc. And they got the best solutions 10 years ago. Not today. There are more efficient algorithms, but just this simple combination between local search algorithms and another local search using two different neighborhoods and they to obtain very nice results. Now, as I told you, how we combine metaheuristics with exact in this class. So ideas. <coughs> Remember, those are important aspects in mathematical programming. Branching, 
bounding, cutting plane, selection, and colon generation selection. What is nice here, all those problems are complex problems in designing algorithms, are complex optimization problems. So the idea, in, in, in those problems, we will use metaheuristics to solve those problems. They are very complex. So in the design of mathematical programming algorithms, those are very important and complex questions. Remember, branching. Which node you will select in the tree to, exp to explore first? Bounding. How you will generate the upper bound? Cutting plane. There are a lot of different cuts which are possible. W which ones are efficient? And colon generation. You have a large, huge number of columns. Which columns are efficient? So those problems <coughs> can be formulated as complex optimization problems. We, we cannot use exact <laughs> uh, solution for those. The people are using heuristics, very simple heuristics. Instead of using very simple heuristics, for instance, here, here depth first, or something like this, let's use metaheuristics to guide, guide us to have more efficient answers to those. For instance here, local branching is very, today, is very popular idea in mathematical programming. What is local branching? It just use local search into branch and bound. And believe me, local branching now is implemented in all CPLEX, you know, solvers, etc. Those ideas are implemented. Bounding, we have to generate upper bounds. We can use heuristics to generate upper bounds. Cutting plane, we can use, for instance here, I'll give you some, some ideas. We can use local branching to do some decomposition of the problem. If you have a large number of constraints and pricing, <coughs> you can use heuristics to solve the pricing problems. And remember the pricing problems, which columns you will use, you will fix and which column you will, you will solve. Okay? So, in all branch and bound algorithms, you have to do some branching, <coughs> you have to do some bounding, you have to do some cutting, some pricing, and all metallistics have been used to solve those problems. Yes, in my team, uh, two years ago, are you familiar with dynamic programming? Of course, dynamic programming is very well-known uh, algorithm. And we, the idea is very simple, and <coughs> we, we got best known results for very important problems. What's the idea? Dynamic programming is an exact algorithm to solve problems where you can divide the problems in sub-problems. Good. So in many, many applications, dynamic programming is very efficient. But you know that if the scale, you cannot scale with this algorithm. So what's the idea? We, 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 we have designed this idea. What is dynamic programming in two words? You will explore a graph <coughs> of states. And dynamic programming in this graph of states, you have to generate it, of course, and you will find uh, in this graph the minimum path, the shortest path in this graph. But in real problems, you cannot generate this graph. You cannot generate it. It's a huge graph. So what's, what's the idea? Instead of generating to the complete graph and then find the shortest part in this graph, we will use metaheuristics to generate the most interesting part of this graph. So how solution will be encoded for this problem if you would like to do this? The solution here will be, what will be solution here? It will be a path in this graph. But I will not generate the whole graph, it's impossible. So I will apply ideas from dynamic programming and I will use metaheuristics <coughs> to generate only the, the most interesting part in this graph. And then we, we design a new algorithm which the name is the Dynamo. Metaheuristic search for dynamic programming. And we apply this for many very important problems like unit commitment problem. <coughs> Those are very important problems. And then we got the best and many people are working on those problems, we got the best results for those problems. The idea is, and believe me, for some problems, you don't have the choice. Dynamic programming, you have to, to, to use it. 
And here, if you, you have large scale problems, and of course, but here we have designed a new neighborhood because the solution here is a path in this graph. What is neighborhood? What is mutation? What is crossover? How you will recombine two paths? How, what's the, the neighborhood of a path? A lot of uh, nice ideas have been, uh, this was complete thesis, okay? But I'm very happy with this argument because it's very, very efficient arguments. So if you have problems where dynamic programming is efficient, let's go there. Okay? Uh, yes, so other ideas, I like this. Uh, I always select the, the ideas I, I, <laughs> I like, okay? This, this idea is very nice. What's the idea here? You, you are okay with me that if you take just a local search, if you take the neighborhood and make it large neighborhood, you will get better results. But the problem with large neighborhoods, complexity. You can say my neighborhood is all the space if you want. Huh? It's uh, nice, but <laughs> how you will explore it? The idea is it in this work, they call it very large neighborhood search. The idea is to, to define some large neighborhoods, but, but, but effic efficient to explore them. So there are a lot of papers and a lot of works for instance, dinosaur, uh, cyclic exchange, ejection chain. The idea is here is to, to propose large neighborhoods, even exp exponential neighborhoods, but, but very easy to, very efficient to ex explore those spaces. So, for instance, you can use any metallistic, meta local search or symmetric leaning or whatever you want. You will <coughs> define a large neighborhood and you will explore this neighborhood with an exact method. For instance, uh, in DynaSearch, they are using dynamic programming to explore this neighborhood. In, uh, in some algorithms, they are using some network flow algorithms. Branch and bound. So very nice ideas, but of course, it, it depends on your problem. It depends on your problem, but the idea is to, let's say I will use this large neighborhood and I will use very efficient exact algorithms to find the best solution in this neighborhood. Very nice ideas here. Okay, uh, yes, uh, just to, to mention something. When I'm talking about, uh, <coughs> yeah, combining meta with exact, there are two different parts. Metaheuristics and exact, and exact and metaheuristics, as you see here, okay? So I give you here examples of meta and exact, and, but here is exact and meta. So it's, the role is different. And here, exact and meta. What are the other ideas in exact and metaheuristics? For instance, <coughs> you can use uh, mathematical programming to generate promising initial solution. Very efficient, very simple ideas. Suppose that you have integer uh, linear program. Then very efficient ideas to relax the problem, find very good initial solution, and go ahead. Instead of generating a random solution, very easy to, to, to use. Guiding local and greedy improvement, or uh, repairing some feasible solution, or even variable fixing, which variable you can fix. So th those ideas of relaxation, can guide the metaheuristic search to, to, to generate more efficiently solutions. Now, what's about using ideas from the, uh, machine learning in metaheuristics or, or the inverse, okay? So, what is machine learning? Machine learning, before talking about machine learning, what are the data? What, which data we will explore? So, here the data is the solution I am generating I can generate millions, billions of solutions, okay? In the decision space, in the objective space, the moves I am generating, uh, uh, some local optima, some lot of data. So th those arguments are generating a lot of data. The idea is how to extract some knowledge from th this data. This is the idea. For instance, some simple ideas. Ah, this is very, very popular in engineering design. In engineering design, uh, uh, what they, uh, they are talking about surrogate models or meta-modeling. You, you can never 
in, in, I don't know if you are familiar with the engineering design community, but if you are working with automotive or uh, airline industry, you will never evaluate the real objective function. It's very time consuming. You will never. You cannot evaluate. You have to do simulation. You have to do some approximation. You can never, if you would like to design a car, you will not design it and then evaluate it. It's impossible. You have to simulate. You have to simulate the object. And then, so there are, you can, we can use machine learning to do a good, very good approximation of the objective function. Some ideas from statistics or from machine learning, regression or some classification. What will be the good approximation of the objective function? Because you don't have an objective function. You, you have to, to do some simulation and then generate some, some, some points in the search space and then uh, evaluate the real objective function. Uh, what? Yes. Yeah, many, those are very popular. As I told you, in metaheuristics there are a lot of parameters. A lot of parameters. How you will fix those parameters? Nice idea. In the last uh, five years, a lot of work in this, uh, in this part. A lot of PhD work, etc. Just to use machine learning techniques to find the best values of the parameters. You can use any a uh, lot of techniques in reinforcement learning, in different, um, just to find the best values of your metaheuristics. Don't do that in, you know, uh, experimental way. Do it with some efficient machine learning algorithms that find the best values of, of your parameters. And as you know, all, all algorithms have many parameters. <laughs> yes, now, this is the, as you see here, just in the first class of hybridization, low level, low level, it's always changing the internal uh, structure of the algorithms. Relay it means that always sequential way. You have some nice ideas, okay? Now let's um, switch to low level teamwork. In this slide, I can tell you 100%, 100% of efficient population-based metaheuristics will always combine population-based with single solution-based. 100% of efficient, okay? If you take any, any paper or any work designing population-based metaheuristics, which is efficient, for sure you will have some local search in it. For instance, if you, if you will take some evolution algorithms or particle swarm or ant colonies or whatever you want, always you can integrate local search algorithms. Oh, and always do that. Always do that. Ah. So here, for instance, you can replace the mutation by some local search. You can replace your crossover by greedy heuristic. Those ideas are very, well, very popular in the last decade. And if you don't do this, be sure that your population argument will, be, will not be efficient, for sure. So this is very classical, what we call mimetic, etc., etc. It's classical, but it's not original, okay? Those are original ideas, and very simple ideas. If you are familiar with, uh, let's say, evolution algorithms, and then you, you have to do some recombination, crossover. Crossover means that you have two solutions. Suppose that you have two solutions, and then you have to recombine those solutions to generate an offspring, to generate a new solution. So in the ev evolution algorithm community, they are doing this in a random way. For instance, in one cut, they will cut here randomly, exchange the green with the, with the blue one, or the blue one with the, uh, the red one, random way. The crossover are blind operations. So, here, and this is not very popular, but very efficient ID, instead of doing it randomly, do it using some mathematical programming algorithms. For instance, for instance, suppose that you have those two solutions. The green part is common to those, those two. So I will say the green part is common, I will fix it. 
And then, the rest here, I will use some exact methods, dynamic programming, bench and bound, this is not a problem, to find the best value of the other part. Wow. And believe me, if you can, if you can design some efficient arguments here, because those are sub-problems, so you can, you can solve them exactly. You can fix at least the, the size here. If you, you know that you, you, you can solve sub-problems of size k, fix this k, and use some dynamic programming or, or branch and bound, and then you, you will fix at least this part in exact way. So what's, what's the idea? If here the green part is common, it means that this common part is, is good. <laughs> the idea is this. <laughs> but the rest, use exact method to find the best values and don't do it randomly. You know? So, so mathematical programming, you can use constant programming, dynamic programming, it depends on your problem, of course, huh? and the efficiency of the, those arguments. And here, I'm sure that if you are using this, you will have some nice surprises, because it's not a random way, but we are solving in optimalities those sub-problems. Uh, and this is, you know, th the problem with um, metallistics, how to handle constraints. This is really a huge problem. If you have a lot of constraints, for instance, in scheduling problems, in packing, cutting problems, you have a lot of constraints. So you will never use a complete representation of solution. You will use what we call indirect decoding. What I mean by that? Uh, for here, you will not represent solution by complete representation. For instance, in scheduling, just say the order of jobs. You will not fix the, the exact time, but just the order. And then, to decode this solution to complete, you will use an exact algorithm. So, it's like metaheuristics will work on simplified search space, and for any solution of this simplified search space, we are using exact algorithms to decode the solution in exact way to find the complete representation of the solution. And believe me, to my experience, if you have such classes of problems where you have many constants, use always direct decoding. And here you can use mathematical programming to decode a solution. For instance, here you manipulate permutation, and from this permutation you will find the best timing for each task. Because metallistics cannot work on the, the exact timing. It's huge search space, this is useless. It's space where you, you will spend a long time without obtaining good solution. Just work on the permutation. And then for any permutation to find the exact times, use a greedy algorithm or use exact algorithm. Those ideas are very, very efficient. Yeah, and now how we use uh, exact into uh, metaheuristics, in uh, population-based metaheuristics. The same, the same thing, you can use relaxation for guiding by using lower bounds, dual variables, partial solutions. As I told you here, in crossover mutation, you can use those IDs in mutation crossover. Now, what's about data mining in low-level teamwork? Some IDs. For instance, in the combination operators, the same thing. You can use IDs from, from i give you an example. i give you an example. In, in crossover, you, you can find some rules. You have the data, you have, suppose that your data are sol good solution. You have an algorithm that generates good solution, so your database is good solutions. From those good solutions, if you apply some asso uh, association rule or classification rules, you, find, you will find such uh, rules like, if you have this and this, then you will have this. Okay? From those association rules, you will generate, you will generate new solutions. The idea is the same in mathematical programming, but here you will use data mining algorithms that generate knowledge. This knowledge is represented by classification rules or association rules. And then you will use those rules 
to generate new solution. If, for instance, one rule tells you, ha, if you, you have, suppose that you have an assignment problem or vehicle routing problem. If you visit this city and this city, then you have to visit the city. Do it in the generation of new solution. Because the association rule extract this rule from good solutions. <coughs> extract knowledge from good solutions. So use this knowledge in generating new solutions. And, and this is the idea, I don't know if you are familiar with them, this class of algorithms, which, which are very popular in Spain. <laughs> People from uh, University of uh, Santander in the north. Santander or, no, no, not Santander, San Sebastian. San Sebastian. They are very popular in uh, this family of algorithms. They are using estimation distribution algorithms. It's exactly that. They are extracting some um, uh, probabil probabilistic models from the population, and from these probabilistic models, it can be Bayesian network, etc., they are generating the new solutions. You have population solution. From this population, you will extracting models, probabilistic models. What are the good solution, and best solution? And from those models, you generate new solution. Some people are using Bayesian networks, some people are using some simple statistics, etc. And this family of algorithms is named estimation distribution algorithms. And of course, I, as I told you, if you have very expensive objective function, the European project I'm participating in dealing, is dealing with this. If you have very expensive objective function, you cannot evaluate the solution. It's very expensive. So you are using some approximation, some metamodeling, just to have very quick evaluation. It's not precise, not problem, but it's good approximation. Then at the end, you can switch to the real objective function. You know, I have one project when one objective function takes two hours. Imagine one solution, one objective, two hours. You cannot use those algorithms. It takes a <laughs> century. Two hours just for one solution. And here you generate thousands or millions of solutions. So here you have to use some surrogate or metamodeling or some approximation using neural networks, for instance, or something like this. Good. Now, uh, what's about uh, high level? Yes, now we will switch to high level. Here, I will not change anything internally. We will just collab black boxes collaborating. The boxes, forbidden to change. Those are very popular ideas. It, anyone is using this. For instance, start a local search by greedy heuristic. Uh, start, uh, let's start with population-based metaheuristics and apply local search at the end. Those are very popular high-level relay hybrids. So I will not spend some time here. But if you would like to combine metaheuristics with exact methods, there are some nice collaboration. Look here, the box of metaheuristics, the box of mathematical programming. And of course, it depends on the order. If you start by metaheuristics or mathematical programming, look at the information you can exchange. All those information are important to exchange that helps the two boxes. For instance, if you are starting with metaheuristics, you can... Metaheuristics are interesting for such any feasible solutions sometimes. And for instance, look, here I can give you some upper bound. I can give you some incomplete good solution. I can give you some sub-problems, nice sub-problems. I can give you some nice columns to fix and then use exact methods. Now, if you, you start with mathematical programming, I can, you, I can give you some lower bounds. If I relax the problem, I can give you some nice lower bounds. I can give you some nice problems. I can give you some nice partial solution and then go to, to fix the other solution. So the idea here, which kind of information provided by metaheuristics, provided by exact methods that can help the two. And believe me, there are a lot of information that can be exchanged. Very, very simple. But I have a question for you. You can ask me this question. You can tell me why this kind of collaboration starts 
start now and not 20 years ago or 30 years ago. Why? This is new. Those are new ideas, very recent ideas. And I have one paper uh, dealing with this in Operational Research Journal, and it appears just two years ago or three years ago. Why now and not 10 years ago? Why? <laughs> Do you have an answer? I will tell you why. Because it's simple. The community of evolution algorithms, the community of operational research, the community of machine learning, they are not talking each other. <laughs> That's simple like this. 15 years ago, 10 years ago, the conferences, you go to any mathematical programming conference, you will never, never see a paper on heuristics. Never! Never! If you go to the community of evolution algorithms, those people, you know, <coughs> artificial intelligence, mathematical programming, they are not, what, what's that? They're not knowing even what's mathematical programming. And as you see, mathematical programming is mostly not in computer science, it's mostly, it depends on the countries, okay? For instance, in US or in uh, Belgium or in Canada, people in mathematical programming or people from operational research are never, never in computer science. Never. And people from metallistics are 100% in computer science. They don't communicate. So, no, no problem of communication and also problem of they don't like to communicate in the past. Now it's better. As I told you, if you go to mathematical programming or journal or a conference, you will never find a session on heuristics or... No, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's like religions, you know. Everyone has his religion and they don't communicate. It's crazy. But now it's more... If you go to mathematical programming conferences, you will find a lot of sessions about heuristics, etc. This is life. <laughs> <laughs> but it's important to know that. And even machine learning, just this is the starting, how to use machine learning in optimization. You, you look at the last three years, a lot of conferences with the title learning optimization, but five years ago you will never see that. Machine learning <coughs> is machine learning, optimization is optimization, at least. Mathematical programming with machine learning, st still some time, still some time. Machine learning with metallistics, it's okay because, you know, the two are computer scientists. But mathematical programming, machine learning, still some time, a lot, lot of things to do. Good. Yeah, some, as I, very simple ideas. High level relay hybrid uh, combining metallistics and data mining. Vehicle routing problem is very one known problem. Vehicle routing problems, very one known problem. You have a set of clients, set of depots, set of uh, different, uh, and you have to, to, to find for each customer which, from which depot or which, what are the different routing, routes, okay? So you can use, you can use some data mining. Suppose that you have millions of clients or thousands of clients. You cannot use mathematical programming or heuristics on, on this set. You, you can use some decomposition ideas using some machine learning. For instance, you do some clustering. Clustering <coughs> is one known algorithm. This is geographical clustering. You apply some clustering ideas and then you will decompose your problems with sub-problems using clusters. And for each cluster, you will solve it independently. And you can do that, of course, many times. So you can use some clustering ideas in decomposing the problem in sub-problems. And here, of course, for clustering, you can use any algorithms, k-means or neural networks, etc., etc. And then you can you can find some good patterns. And if you generate a lot of solution, you will find good patterns in those solutions using some machine learning patterns in those solution. You can decompose as I told you and you can do some prediction. If you have some dynamic problems, 
dynamic problems, for instance, a new client. You can do some prediction using some classification algorithms to, from database that tells you what's the probability to have client at this point, at this time. So it helps you to, to be more reactive. So just to tell you that a lot of machine learning algorithms can be used to, to help mathematical programming and to help metallistics to solve more efficient to solve more efficiently the problem. Yes, now some words about teamwork. I give you I give you many examples of relay. What's about teamwork? In parallel. Let's do this in parallel. Let's start with simple, simple historical ideas. This algorithm designed 20 years ago or 30 years ago called Island Model of Evolution Algorithms. What's the idea here? The idea is island like you know, you, you have different islands that evolve in parallel and then from time to time they, they communicate by some migration. So this is the idea. What's the idea here? Instead of having one GA with global population, we will have a lot of GAs with subpopulation and from time to time we collaborate. As I told you at the beginning, this model is, is better in diversification. Always think about this, intensification, diversification, exploration, exploitation. This model, every, every GA will evolve independently and from time to time we will exchange some individuals. This model will be more efficient in terms of diversification. Each GA will generate diverse solution. And diversity is very important. Because why it's important? If you have solutions that are similar, you will generate solutions that are similar and <coughs> it's no sense. But if you have solutions which are diverse, it's better to generate new efficient solutions. So diversity is very important. And people designing such algorithms, this is for diversity. So the questions are, what's, which, what, what is the topology? When we communicate, when we will communicate. It's important. Which information now will exchange? And how to deal with the received information? In this model, it's simple. But now, if I, I ask you, in those boxes, I will put some machine learning, some exact algorithms, some metallistics, some local search. Wow. In parallel, how it works. When we communicate, which information we communicate how to deal with this information. This is nice, but believe me, very, very few people are working on those models. Why? The same answer. To be... Because here you need some, some knowledge in parallel algorithms. Mathematical programming, machine learning, metallistics. A lot. Very, very few people are designing such things. Yeah, I'll give you here, this is another, another uh, example we, we, we did in uh, PhD. So this is my message for you today. Always think in parallel, you know. You are evolving in parallel here. So always think in parallel. Because here, you know, suppose that I have many, I can have also many boxes of metallistics. Many boxes of branch and bound, exploring different parts of different trees in parallel. Which information I exchange in, pa in, in, in parallel, not in sequential way, in parallel way. Uh, and here I don't have time, but we have, yes, I don't have time here, but we in, uh, in PhD work uh, two years ago, we have designed, just in two words, because it's a complex model, but just in two words to, to give you an idea, we have designed a very nice model combining branch and bound, mathematical programming, and metallistics boxes, but those boxes are thousands of different boxes. Branch and bound can be thousands of different branch and bound. Each branch and bound will focus on subtree, but the problem here, what's the important question? Those different branch and bound will not work on the same region of the search space. They must be exclusive. So imagine 
Imagine a model like this. You have thousands of branch unbound, each one working on given subtree, and this subtree is given by evolution algorithms. Evolution algorithms will tell branch unbound, go there. I have found good solution, go there. And branch unbound will tell to, and here you, you have thousands of evolution algorithms, branch unbound will tell to evolution, this subtree, forget about it. I explore it, nothing interesting. Go. So, the most important question here, how to collaborate between those families to make them more efficient, search interesting regions and don't search the same region. And here, what was the, what was the most important question? The encoding of the solution. We've, we have found tree-based encoding of permutation problems and this tree-based encoding of solution answer all those questions. So as I told you at the beginning, the encoding of the solution is very important. So we, have, we found some tree encoded of intervals. We encode the solution by interval, and from this interval, we generate subtrees, and we are sure that we are, not, we are doing exclusive research, search. For instance, look at this subtree is encoded by, by this interval. This one is encoded by this interval. So here, we, we communicate intervals. <coughs> and from this interval, I will know which, which subtree I will explore. Very nice ideas here, but we don't have manpower to, to go further. <laughs> but we, here we solve some well-known problems and we found the, uh, the best known solutions. As I told you now, this is really the, for the future. Suppose now that you have a lot of data mining boxes, machine, mathematical programming, metaheuristics, how we can collaborate in parallel, parallel way to solve the problem. Which information we exchange, at what time we exchange information. This is for the future. Good. How much time it... Uh, whoa. <laughs> I talk a lot, you have to stop me. <laughs> uh, how... how uh, ten minutes? Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, it will be okay. Uh, yes, some nice ideas. Yes, I will focus on this because those are nice ideas. Very exotic ideas. So, uh, yes, this is not important. Yeah, the idea here is to decompose your problem into many sub-problems and then use metaheuristics or mathematical programming for those sub-problems. Nice uh, ideas, but here, this is more... You know, I proposed this algorithm a long time ago. You know, there are many nice papers that are not referenced, but 20 years after they will reference the paper. But this idea has been... Uh, Desi designed a long time ago, and you will see that it's very interesting, this ID. Look at this ID. We have designed this ID, and we have generalized this ID. Suppose that, look, you have an uh, environment with obstacles, okay? Those are obstacles. And you have a robot, for instance, a car. Well, and you have the initial position, and you have the final position, okay? Final. And the problem is to find the path for the robot for the initial po position to the final position to guide this robot. Any, this any path. Any path. Any path. But this is uh, simple, but you can have some complex problem like this, you know. Uh, suppose that you have this. And then you say for this to this. I will take this example. Find the path from this sol initial solution to this initial solution. You have a labyrinth, complex space. Okay, so we do, we, do, we do this with very good roboticians. It's a very uh, exciting problem in robotics. Find the path from the initial position to the final position. So a path is like a set of, uh, set of trajectories, okay? So, look at this. If you say initial position, final position, it will be easy. Here it will be easy, okay? Any local search algorithm will find it. But you are okay with me if the initial position is there and the final is there, Tricky. 
What is tricky here? The objective function, if you, if you formalize this problem, and the objective function is the distance. So you represent the solution as a path. Suppose that you have this path, okay? And you see that this path is not feasible. So the objective function will be the distance from the last point that is not an obstacle to the destination. So if you formalize the objective function like this, apply any algorithm, it will fail. Because this objective function, you have a lot of local optima. A lot of local optima. What's the idea here? You will see that this very efficient idea. And, uh, so the idea is that we decompose the problem in two different problems. The first problem, find a path from initial solution to a given point. To a given point. This is a problem. And the other problem, forget about the final destination. Forget about this. Just find a set of points in this space where we, we have already a path. Okay? Forget about this. This is another problem that we are solving in parallel. So just find find set of points that we have already some paths from the initial solution to those points. What will be the objective function for this second problem? What will be the objective function for this second problem? The objective function is maximize the minimum distance to all those points, already found points. It means that we are diversifying the generation of points. So, the objective for the second problem is maximize the minimum distance to all points that have been found and where you have. So what will happen with time? If you have easy problem, the second sub-problem will be useless. Nothing to do, it's easy. The, f the first problem will solve the, the, the question. But the more the problem is complex, more you will generate points. And it will be like this. Here, for this problem, first you will generate here, okay? And then, in this problem, you will say, go, go further than those. And then you will find points here. Top, top, top. And then you will, we have proved the optimality. With time, you will always find the path. So just, a, what's the idea? The idea, which are far away from those which are already generated. Diversification problem. Go where we, in the spaces which have not been yet explored. Just one slide about implementation. I'm, I'm not sure that you are familiar with those uh, keywords. So, I'm talking about billions of black boxes. It can be. I can design an algorithm with millions of black boxes. But technology today, technology today, you know, GPUs, clusters, multi cores, grid, clouds. With those technologies, we have billions of processors. At least today, I can have thousands of processors. Tomorrow, we will have millions of processors. Cheap, cheap. GPUs with GPUs, it, it costs $100. And you have thousands of processors. Even in, in your phone, you have thousands of processors. Multi-cores, the same. Any computer now has multi-core. So why not to design parallel algorithms? And here also you can combine. You know the, the most, you know the top 500 that is in, in, in the world today, there is classification of top, what are the top 500 machines in the world. <laughs> 10 years ago, all the machines were, were from, the 10 first were from US. And today, what are the two most powerful machines in the world? From which country? China. From China. Which kind of processors? 
You know, the market of pro uh, techn processor technology, there are two, Intel, AMD. <laughs> That's all. US, five years ago, decided to don't sell any American technology to uh, China. They designed Chinese processor, which are in those machines, with Chinese technology from A to Z. Even the processors are made in China. The two most powerful machines now are from China, and of course they are combining GPUs. It's what I call here my heterogeneous. Okay, a lot of GPUs, a lot of CPUs, and a lot of clusters, and no machine from Europe. <laughs> 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 in, uh, I think the first twenty, no machine from Europe. Europe in this area is losing a lot, uh, but a lot of investment here, you know, a lot of money. <coughs> to invest in new technology of processors, billions, billions of dollars. But, you know, this is our uh, French grid, Lille is here, and we, we are using today thousands of processors to solve our problems. So all the ideas I gave you about parallel algorithms, we have implemented them on parallel machines. On GPUs, on combining GPUs with multi-core, with cloud. Because in cloud computing today, you can, you can buy GPUs for nothing. So you can, uh, you can say to Amazon, I would like to have 1,000 of GPUs for <coughs> 10 minutes. And you will pay just those 10 minutes of use. Yeah, so I will not, uh, I, I, you, you know, this classification, I propose some grammar to, to generalize. You give me any habitization, I will give you sentence using this grammar. For instance, if you give me this complex classification, you know, with using this grammar, I will, I will give you the, I will give you the... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is my conclusion and my perspectives, okay. Conclusions. This is my point of view. If you have some PhD students or if you have some, you are doing some research in this area, for me it's a must. It's a must today. If you would like to design efficient optimization algorithms, it's a must to bridge the gap between the different cultures and communities. Metallistics, mathematical programming, machine learning, for me it's a must. Exploring the synergies between those different approaches. I hope you are you will be okay with me, or at least I convince you. <laughs> of course, of course, the question you, you will ask me: <coughs> How you will guide me? How you will guide me to obtain the best combination? This is very complex questions. It depends on your problem. It depends on many, many inputs. Of course. According to some knowledge, I can help, but I don't have, uh, you know, <coughs> ma magic answer that it depends on your problem. For instance, in your, pro your problem, if you know very well some uh, exact algorithms, okay, you have to reuse them. And then, what is that? Uh, yeah, yeah, this is the, what I call, what we call, we, we have some collaboration with people from Elche. Uh, yes, how to find automatically the best treated hybrid scheme? This is a very complex question. Nice question, but very complex. It's machine learning question. It can be formulated as machine learning questions. You have to predict what is the best combination according to some data. But this is nice perspective. And this is my the perspective, nice perspective from my, my point of view. From problems, a lot of things must be done in multi-objective optimization, in multi-level optimization problem, and optimization under certainty. Those are the priority for me. What I, what I show you today is only for mono-objective optimization. <coughs> what we can do for multi-objective, 
for optimization with uncertainty? Wow, lots of things. So in terms of software, there are a lot of things to do also. How to couple solvers with uh, modeling languages, software frameworks. How to do it large scale parallel implementation. And also algorithms, some nice ideas from interval programming. Those are very nice uh, algorithmic approaches in uh, optimization, Monte Carlo, tree search, interval programming, in, uh, which are well known in uh, artificial intelligence and here in continuous optimization. Still some work to do to combine ideas with those arguments. And as I told you, the parallel aspect, the cooperative asynchronous aspect, a lot of things can be done. Few, very few ideas are in, in this area. And this is for publicity. <laughs> <laughs> the most important paper is this one. You see, it's uh, just... Uh, uh, this is the paper. Uh, and we have, you know, this book on hybrid metallistics. <coughs> This book on parallel optimization, and this is the most important book, of course. This is this book, a lot of ideas are there. And we are exploring some ideas in this bi-level optimization. It's like game theory, you know. Bi-level, how to this is why uh, in our discussion we sometimes I <laughs> I'm talking about this because in bi-level you have two hierarchy of problems. It's like a game. And then how to extend those ideas to bi-level, lots of things to do. Even in the metallistic aspect, very few papers. How to solve these problems using metallistics. So nothing in, uh, nothing in hybrid methods. That's all. <laughs> Time to lunch now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, David. <laughs> questions? Uh, you have to ask questions, if not, no lunch today. <laughs> Uh, in your opinion, um, do you find it interesting for us, for we have a, a research center, small research center, we are about 40 researchers, uh, to spend some money to, to buy a, a supercomputer, I mean, uh, not just to, to win to China, no, we don't want to be China. Uh, or of course to, to teach our students, to learn, and also to research. And if you say yes, uh, how, how the, the, the size of the supercomputer? In your opinion? My opinion, the answer is definitely no. <laughs> I will tell you why. No, nothing. No, no, I will tell you why. We have an experience. In my team in, in, in France, we have an experience with that more than 20 years. We, we are. You, you remember, I will tell you why and then, yes, yeah. 15 years ago, or 15 years ago, at least, we created this project in France about grid computing and even before this, in Lille, we have a long history with parallel machines, a long story with parallel machines, from the beginning, even in my PhD, I did my PhD here in Grenoble, so we have a long story with parallel machines from the beginning. I don't know if you know this transputers. From the beginning of parallel machines, we know what, what is happening. Why, from my point of view, universities like LG don't put money in this? Why? Because huge money is invested there. I don't think that University of LG will have the money. You have some priorities, you know. I, I, get, I will give you some numbers. Just this year, what's the problem with this kind of machines that are expensive and every two years you have to, to evolve the machines? Every year we are putting, just in Lille, just in Lille, we are putting half million of euros just to maintain this. 500,000 of euros from Inria, from university. Why? Because if you have in at give in Barcelona, the, in Spain, the leaders in this is uh, UPC or uh, Politecnica uh, Barcelona or Catalonia. Part, Catalonia yeah. Why? Because you need a lot of users from different disciplines. 
mechanical engineering, civil engineering, etc., etc. Those are the real users of those machines. And it costs a lot of money. For you, the best strategy, there are two answers. For students, it's important, but just one cluster or GPUs, it costs nothing. Okay? But if you would like to have to use this machine, there are a lot of free, free, you, ca you can use ever our machines. I can give you access. There are a lot of free machines in the world that can be used by a scientist. So don't, don't invest in that. No, no. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, uh, a lot of money is... Uh, but of course, I think in Europe, this, is, this question may, must be at the European level. We have to, because it's a lot, lot of money. Yeah, this technology is important, but it cannot be at the university level now. No, it must be European strategy. Just to spend 1,000 euros for a student? Uh, yeah, 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 just cluster or GPUs. Students must be, my point of view today, students must have lectures on parallel programming using MPI. There are three environments MPI, Open, Open MP, Open MP yeah. and why not uh, GPUs, uh, CUDA, or uh, OpenCL, or... This is programming. Today you have to think parallel. Don't use only sequential languages. Everything is parallel today. Mm -hmm. okay. So, investment here is uh, 10,000 or 5,000 euros. It's okay. But if you would like to buy a parallel machine, maintenance is the problem. It's not just buy it. Every two years you have to, yeah. processors are to the trash. Mm -hmm. The unity here is millions. So invest in swimming pools, it's better. Yeah. <laughs> More questions? Thank you. But of course, you have access, open access to European machines. In France, a lot of people from Spain are using those machines. and. Uh, mm -hmm. But if your question is uh, parallel programming lectures, for me the answer is definitely yes. If you don't have lectures in uh, Elche in computer science or parallel programming, it's uh, if cloud in cloud today, cloud grid parallel programming lecture on those topics is a must. And there are not a lot of students on this uh, those topics. A lot of job demand. Mm -hmm. But yeah. not uh, not of students in uh, GPU programming or in uh, cloud uh, computing. Do you have lecture on this issues in? But not here in our institute. It's in it's in the university, but uh, in engineering. Ah, in computer science, there is no lecture on parallel programming. Uh, there are subjects, but mm, no lectures. No lecture. Just me. I think. Mm. <laughs> No, but in engineering there are people who work in, in but in a, in a low level. Instead ah, the architecture level. Yeah, but in a high level, include computer and PI, I think this way. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.